Communicators. My name is James Pledger. I'm the Assistant Head Teacher at the Grove School and I'm going to talk you through the Confident Communicators programme we have here. When we launch the programme, I start by showing students this slide, giving them an opportunity to claim a reward if they can respond to this sentence. Invariably they can't because, quite unfairly, it is written in Samoan. So I give them another opportunity with this sentence. This, as you'll be able to tell, is written in English. However, again, I've used the language deliberately to obscure my meaning. The point I'm making when I start off with this is that I've used language for my financial gain, and if they could understand that language and that communication better, they would have been financially better off. Imagining a world without the power of language is difficult because it's something that we take for granted. But actually, it's something that's relevant to all of us in all of our worlds. Important messages, signals, body language, jokes, all these things come under what we would class as the power of communication, the power of language. Likewise, if students weren't able to understand the power of language, then how could they read and learn from the written records of others, or indeed record their own thoughts? It would also mean, if students did not have the power of language, that their memory was all that they knew. What I mean by this is that they wouldn't have any understanding of anything outside their immediate experience. As well as this, they'd only be able to communicate with people in ways that they'd communicated before. They would not be able to learn new ways of communication and unlock the power of language to be able to articulate and interact with other people they'd not met before. As well as this, language is often used by powerful people around the world to make their point and, in some cases, unfairly subjugate others. I made the point that this can be a political point, or it can be just a point for life in general, that it is important for students to understand that a message coming from someone who is in power is not necessarily the same as a message from someone who knows what they're talking about. The national picture, as shown through the National Literacy Trust, is a startling one. 5.1 million adults don't have the literacy skills expected of an 11-year-old, according to their research from the National Literacy Trust, and this is seen to have the most damaging impact when we talk about health literacy. The link between literacy and health literacy is one that is made in the graphic here from the National Literacy Trust. We start from the point of literacy where we read, write and how we understand, and there's a direct link between this and health literacy. The point I've made with students is, for example, if I don't understand what a calorie means, or indeed if I don't understand what the word burn means in reference to a calorie, I'm never going to make sense of, of the phrase, I need to burn more calories than I take in. If I've not heard that language before, I've not heard those words used in that way before, I will not be able to get the importance of that health message. This, in turn, is linked directly to health outcomes. As well as this, you can see at the bottom here that literacy is linked directly with socioeconomic status. In short, our place in society, and to be blunt about it, how much we earn. These two things, our health and our socioeconomic status, are what ultimately have an impact on our life expectancy, according to the National Literacy Trust. This means that there is a link between literacy and the quality of the life we have, and ultimately how much we can expect to have. The answers to these problems are wide and complicated, but the way that we portray this is is through confident communicators. This is split into three separate areas, confident speaking, confident reading and confident writing. And the vision of this is underpinned by the very simple statement of talk is the foundation of literacy. The most important element of confident communicators is that people are able to talk in a way that shows they are confident, that they sound like academics. Starting with confident speakers, then students can talk about what they're reading and what they're studying. Not only can they do that, but they can use high-level language to articulate themselves, using the subject-specific language from those areas to sound like academics. In short, if we want people to write like geographers, we need them to sound like geographers. If we want them to articulate themselves and write like scientists, we need them to sound like scientists in the first place. And this is important so that our children can be confident speakers, not just at school, but in the wider world, knowing that they are well equipped to make their voices heard and afford them the best opportunities in later life. Confident readers are students who can develop a love of reading, not just at school, but going through the rest of their life. This is because reading in school is directly linked with enthusiasm, and we see that there is a drop in enthusiasm and love of reading round about year eight to year nine. So it's really important that students develop a love of reading and their reading ability. Not only this, but reading is about discerning in judgment. What I mean by that is that we understand that just because we hear something or 
read something from a friend doesn't necessarily mean it's true. Likewise, if you read it in a certain paper, doesn't mean it's trustworthy. Or if you hear it from a certain person, doesn't mean that it should be believable. This is important so that our children carry love of reading throughout school into later life, and they recognise and value the power of information. In the world in which they are growing up now, information and language is all around them and is being constantly used and manipulated, sometimes for devious means. So it's important that they understand that they shouldn't just trust what is placed in front of them. Confident writers are students who can write for different reasons, including actually writing for speaking. They can improve their spelling, they can improve their written exp expression, and they can improve their own work on their own, whether it's through redrafting on their own or taking advice from teachers and people who want to guide them in their writing. This is important so that our children have the very best levels of written expression. And I'm very clear with students that I would never want them to be in a position where they're disadvantaged, whether it be in a job application or an expression of interest or any sort of area where they're going to have to write for some reason. I would hate for them to be disadvantaged purely because they cannot express themselves as confidently in their writing as others. What can students do in the Confident Communicator Strategy at Grove School? The first job is to listen out for those signals that their teachers are going to be using. Teachers have been trained on the fact that they should be using that language, confident speaking. I, we are doing this because I want you to be a confident reader. We're learning about this so that you know how to write about this confidently. So students are told that they need to listen out for that confident word so they know what it is that their teachers are trying to work on with them. We have a word of the week that runs throughout the school and across the whole of Martyrs Academy Trust, and I encourage students to have fun with it. Do not be worried about getting it wrong or misusing it or mispronouncing it. They should take ownership of that word and have fun with it. And on the subject of ownership, that higher level vocabulary that is available in all lessons is something that students should use. This is language that belongs to them. It does not belong to the people that they hear typically using this language, whether it's people such as politicians and people on television, news readers, or whoever, people that they perceive as more academic. Actually, it belongs to all of us, and therefore they should take ownership of the high level vocabulary and use it themselves. And finally, they should value reading. We have dedicated reading time and the confident reading slots at Grove School, and students should be using this purposefully.